You have some people who will place at the door. When visitors are coming, please smile. <laughs> because when they come at the entrance, you must have a big, broad, sunshine smile. If you're having a funeral day, please leave the door. Because the truth be told, people are saying church is dead because some of the people in church are dead. They come into church, and instead of we sing the song, we hear watching everybody else. We ain't singing, we ain't praising God. But after praise and worship, we're ready to criticize everybody. And we haven't yet given God praise, honor, and glory for his goodness, grace, and mercy. All we do is complain. And I realize that in the church, the young people and the others who complain have a coffin mentality. Oh, yes. mercy. Ouch. You have some people in church. Anytime they've been given something to do. Oh, I can't do it today. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, why don't you ask somebody else? But as soon as something goes wrong, here we are, lippy lippy yo. Yeah. <laughs> what am I saying is this? You need to have some, I don't mind the people who complain and do. I don't mind those people. But the people who complain and complain and complain to the end of having a miserable life. Oh. And they bring that funeral mentality to the church. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You see when you do things for God, young people, work on it. Don't just, okay, can you do a welcome on Sabbath? Yes, it's just a welcome. No, it's not. Exactly, it's true. When you're doing even the welcome, you must put some energy, some passion, some enthusiasm. Why? Because even a welcome can change somebody's life. Well, yes. That's true. That's true. Let me tell you something down there. Some houses you go, you see a nice big mat at the floor. Welcome. Mm -hmm. But when you enter the house, the furnitures are so expensive. Oh, don't sit there. <laughs> Oh, we don't use that. <laughs> so all of a sudden now, it's like you have a gallery. <laughs> because I'm supposed to sit down and enjoy. You said, welcome. But when I left, I ain't coming back. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Sometimes the church gives people that experience. We say, welcome. And when, when we come in, we, they don't feel welcome. Mm -hmm. I used to wonder why people said church was dead. And let me tell you something. I thank God for an old man called Clarence Anderson. When I went to church, I said to him, Daddy, church is long, church is dry, and church is boring. But I thank God for him. He said to me, son, come here. And he gave me an old banana. I didn't really want the banana because I, I like the bananas that are very yellow. But that, that banana being too hard, she you know what it's called. <laughs> and he said to me, son, what can you do to change it? No, you can't offer that suggestion to some of the young people in this generation. Because if you allow sometimes some young people, I I, I say, or oh, I say some, right. some. <laughs> if you allow them to run this church, I tell you, they run out Jesus from the first day. <laughs> <laughs> and let me say something, young people. There are times when the adults are, are speaking and they don't like certain things. Let me tell you something. We cannot do without the adults. Because if the adults was to leave, you can't even pay for this church. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Work with the adults. Adults work with the young people. Let me tell you something. The reason why I'm enjoying my experience because of the relationship I have with the adults. Yeah. You see, my friends, my good friends, are those who are in the 80s and 90s. Let me tell you something. They don't have time to watch up and watch down when I'm having a conversation with them. <laughs> they give me experience. They talk to me. They pray with me. They lift me up. Until day and night. They fast for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's 
why I get rid of my adults. I love my adults to pieces. When I went to my immigration stuff and I called some young people, they said, no, God will help you. But you see when you go to the mamas of Zion? Yes. <laughs> they take the letter, they take the passport, and when they begin to pray, it's like they open up heaven and fling him in there. <laughs> That's why I leave in my mamas. Yeah. Amen. And my papas. Because the truth be told, they love to pray. And let me tell you something, young people. Align yourself with people who love to pray. Amen. 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 It was a funeral. In verse 11, the Bible says that, and it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called what? You're all going quiet now. You see, you, you're having the funeral effect. I want you to wake up. Work with me now. He went into a city called? Man. He went into a city called? Man. Watch this now. I've done a research. And I realized that Nain is a beautiful place. A place of green pastures. Watch this now. The Bible says that now Jesus came at the gate of Nain. He came to the gate of a beautiful place. A place of green pastures. And as he came at the gate, guess what was coming out? A dead body. Oh, I'm going somewhere. That sounds like coming to church expecting love expecting order expecting people who have a relationship with God so you come with that expectancy a place of green pastures a beautiful place and when they come they see people in the house of God having malice something dead is being carried out That sounds like a Y. <laughs> With no young people. That sounds like you program with no youth participation. Dead. That sounds like praise and worship. Where the members of the praise team are not connected to God. Dead praise. That sounds like men's ministry and the men ain't playing in their role. It sounds like women's ministry where the truth be told, women are not playing their role. Now what happened? What's supposed to happen in there it was not happening. So Jesus came at the gate. And when he came, instead of a big, broad, sunshine smile, instead of a big welcome, there was a funeral. That sounds like a marriage in which the husband has never told his wife in a long time, honey, I love you. Dead marriage. It sounds like a marriage where there is no respect. A marriage in which Jesus is not the center. That sounds like a family where hatred is the order of the day. Sister fighting against sister. You fight over everything. You're fighting over here, brush. You're fighting over everything. But your sisters. I've learned in life that not because the person dressed up and look up means that they're alive, well, and kicking. That's why when we come to church, we can't assume that because I wore a bright yellow today, there is sunshine in my soul. You can't assume. And I've realized in life that some of the prettiest people are some of the most miserable people. <laughs> Let me tell you something, young people. Be careful of miserableness. It makes us look ugly. You have some people who, the truth be told, have you ever gone to somebody to have a conversation or say something to them, and when you talk to them, they, they run. <laughs> They're just aggressive. No, no tenderness, nothing. Why? Because it's not about what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside. 
Let me say it again. Because some of these young men, they go to the gym and they're pumping. And they're pumping. They ain't pumping nothing up here. But they're pumping. And they're pumping. And then they, they look in the mirror. And then they look in the mirror 40 times. And the truth be told, they haven't read a book from the last two years. <laughs> All the young men, please stand. <laughs> The other young men, you, you, you are, you are All the young men stand up. I'm going to ask you all a question and don't answer. Don't answer. When was the last time we read a book from front to back? Don't answer me. Please sit down. I'm going to ask all the husbands who are here to please stand. I don't want to put you in trouble. This is between me and you. <laughs> when was the last time you did something fantabalicious for your wives? Please sit down. <laughs> What am I trying to say? Don't tell me or ask me when are you getting married? And pressure me, oh, don't you see you're getting old? Where is my grandkids? Where is this? Well, I, I haven't ate a piece of cake for a long time. This cake at Sainsbury and Tesco. Why don't you go buy that one? <laughs> what am I trying to say? There are some people in life who will put pressure on you and that pressure they are applying on you is not for your own good, it's for their good. Yes. That's right, that's right. What am I trying to say now? Let, let's just come back in life. I'm saying to some of us here, we pressure the young people, we ask them when they get their married and we put unnecessary pressure on them and it should be tortured. God help me. When we look at your marriage, no <laughs> It makes one say in his or her heart, if that's the re this the way marriage is, I'd rather be single. Mm. So I'm saying to the couples here, including myself, let's put some fire in the relationship. Because people are watching. There are some people in church since I got married. I only got married nine months now. And I tell the truth. I never knew that's how some church folks were. Yeah. <laughs> Any problems here? <laughs> Come on, talk to me, dear. All this smile and everything, you're just a honeymoon face. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Be careful of people in church. Who has, who has a colorful mm. mentality. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. The Bible says that many of his disciples went with him and what? Many of his disciples went with him and come on people, I can't hear you. Much people. So you got to understand now that when Jesus came at the gate, there was a lot of people with him and his disciples were with him as well. So watch this now. He came at the gate and the Bible said, behold, there was a body being carried out. Let me tell you something, young ladies. Not every man who walk with the Bible in their hand. Some of them carry all up near the chest. Not all of them is sent by Jesus. I mentioned it last night. Some of them, they only want to do Bible study with a particular sister. Be careful of those men who do that with their Bibles. Let me tell you something. You might be here praying for this boy. And you're saying, but Lord, he is handsome. God is answering the prayer because he knows he's a handsome handful. 
You might be here, young man, saying that girl it, 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 it is. It, what, what's the word they use now? It, buff and pain and all them things. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the one they use. You have to help me now. And I'm coming on your turn. Is it right? So. We no pressure in me, we, we all there on the street, we know what's happening. The truth be told, but you're there praying, why Lord, help me because she's pretty. But God knows she's pretty stressful, but you've got to trust God. Mm. When you're ready for relationship, the best person to ask about it is God. Amen. Amen. Because some of us are in ships that Jesus did not ask us to get onto. Mm. But let me tell you, so you know what I learned? I learn in life that every ship has to go through storm. And that's when, you see, and the storm don't start near shore. It starts when you're out there in the deep ocean. And that's when you realize now that you're on the wrong ship. And let me tell you something, especially young people. If you're in a ship, a friendship, a relationship, a partnership, any type of ship, if God did not send you on that ship, you better jump ship or you're going to end up being shipwrecked. Amen. Because you see, out there in the middle of the sea, that's when boyfriends will say to you, I don't want you no more. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the sea, that's when the boy, when you go to the boy who loves you so much, and then when you say, Babe, I'm pregnant, all of a sudden he changed on me to a monster. The boy that was buff is now acting like a buffalo. <laughs> yeah. But these things happen in the midst of the sea. Yeah. Mm. And let me tell you some, some young people, storms are coming. Mm-hmm. Storms are coming. And when they come, you better make sure you're on the right ship. Make sure. Because when they come, storms don't care if you have doctorate. When you see storm coming, don't tell storm I have a PhD in medicine. Storm don't care about nothing. The only person who can save you in the midst of storm is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And let me tell you something, parents. Be very careful because some men, they have the right ticket. But they're not sent by Jesus. Remember the story of Jonah? Jonah had his ticket. He bought his ticket. He had a right to be on the ship. But God did not send him on the ship. What am I trying to say? That's why you can't just welcome people in your life because they, they, they're from this family or they're from this university. Let me tell you something. Only God knows the heart. That's right. Amen. The body was being carried out. And the Bible says that he was the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her. So watch it now. There was much people with Jesus. There was also much people with her. Let me tell you why some of us ain't making it in life. Because if and have a mathematics now. If you have one much people with Jesus and one much people what the funeral. When you had one much people plus one much people, how much people you have in your business? Too much people. <laughs> <laughs> watch this now. What am I trying to say? Let's come back. The reason why some of us get ourselves in trouble is because when we have an issue, instead of bringing it to God, we bring it to a lot of people. People who may not understand God's will for your life. People who sometimes have never even experienced what you've experienced. Some people who don't even love you. But you know what? We just love to talk. And let me tell you something. When they, when some of these people, they're not for you. So when they, when they're ready to sit down and have a cup of tea, guess what's on the menu? Your business. That's why I love prayer because when you have some deep things to talk about, you can just say, "Dear Father, yes, talk to God." The problem we are having now, young people, is that something you're having problems at work. And we so think we're wise, we take the problem and we go on Facebook and we put the problems at work. This stupid manager told me to, and the thing. And then all your friends, before they tell you to take it off, they go. Like, and then the manager uh, okay, I saw everything, and then they fire you. And you come back to the same friends who have jobs. <laughs> What's this now? It was a dead man being carried out. I'm with Jesus. 
You see that body in the coffin? It represents some of us today. No dreams. No aspiration. No vision. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29, where there is no vision, the people perish. Young girls, what is your vision? Sometimes I see some young girl walking, the only thing they're doing is looking behind. And all their boys is looking like bulldogs. Let me tell you something. You're not meant to be some guy's television, just watching you around. Go where you're going and have a vision in life. Because the truth be told, some of these boys who say, I don't even want girls, let me talk to you for a second. <laughs> if you're a child of God, then you have to dress like a child of God. Oh, you didn't get it. If you're a child of God, you must dress like a child of God. Dress like a princess. And also learn to be a dress like a princess. I see girls walking. Pretty girls. And then that boy will say, Oi. <laughs> My size. <laughs> And instead of the girl just continue walking, she goes. <laughs> and then he, he, he came over with his hands. Class somewhere down here. <laughs> and then they on the pants is up north and the pants down south. Yeah, yeah. And then they come over, they don't even have no lyrics. No lyrics? So what are you saying? <laughs> good, yeah? Give me a number, innit? <laughs> and then all of a sudden the girl just... <laughs> and you have the number. Then all of a sudden now, is the, the time come for you to study? Then he calling you, you're pretty, you know. <laughs> and everything is. And the truth be told, you, you, you spend all night talking to him. And when we invite you to all night prayer meeting, you can't make it. You have the energy to stay up all night listening to foolishness. But when it comes to a half night or even a quarter night, we're tired. Why? Because Satan has many of us in a car. Some of these boys that you see walking around, as I said to them last night, I share with you today. If the boy say he wants to spend all night with you, it's okay. It's okay. All you have to do is ask the elder, when is the next all night prayer meeting? And invite him to come. You want to spend all night with me? Come. Give them the address to this church. And you make sure you sit at the front. Sit at the front where the elders can see you. Because when he comes in at the back, if he stays, you know that yes, so now he can work on his heart. But if he goes, you know that one is not for you. <laughs> because if you're in a relationship, and that relationship is not glorifying God, that relationship is dead. Right. So the body was being carried out. Now, in life, when you go to a funeral, I don't, I don't like funeral. You see, once I go to funeral and the, the, the husband or wife oversees my face, that's my cue. I, I don't like funerals. But you have some people in the church, even if they don't know who is in the coffin, it's my cousin's cousin's cousin. They just love funerals. There's some people, as long as it's a funeral, they go. But when there's something that that's motivational, something that's inspirational, when you invite the church, they can't make it. But as soon as somebody dies, they there. Why? Because some people are attracted to their things. That body in the coffin represents some of us who have dreams and aspirations and not working on them. Not working on them. You see, some of us in here, you see, where we are working now, if God was to have his own way, we wouldn't be there. 
Some of us, the truth be told, we hate Mondays. You know why? Because we haven't found our purpose. What does Monday do to anybody? <laughs> Everybody loves Friday. Friday is a lot of love. But Monday, and I realize that the people who are in unfruitful or unprofitable jobs, they hate Monday. And you know what's sad? Some of us for another 40 years will hate Monday. Why? Because we haven't gone to God to ask him, what is your plan for my life, daddy? What is it that you want for me? And when he shows us, we walk in a path. You see when a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, find his or her purpose, Monday is a great day. That body in the coffin represents some of us here who have an idea that you've been sitting on for the past 10 years, 15 years, sitting on that idea. And it should be told, if we're not careful, we'll die, leaving the idea behind. An idea that could have helped the church. An idea that could have blessed the community is dead. But there were some people around the coffin. When you go to funeral, you see some people around the coffin. And let me tell you something, young people. Some of these people around the coffin are called friends. You know why some of us are dying in church and dying immaturely and dying mentally, spiritually, emotionally because of the friends we have around us. Some of us are eagles. We have eagle mentality, but we love to hang around chickens. Young girls, there are some people around the coffin called boyfriend. <coughs> Since you met the boy, your relationship with God just went shh. Golly. And if we're not careful, if you're not careful, it's the boyfriend. If you really look at the whole situation through, through a mature perspective, you realize that this boy only calls you when he needs. It is sad how sometimes young girls in church blessed with gifts and abilities and talents. God has favored you. But somehow you allow the man goose <laughs> to come and take you away and bring you down. You see young boys with prospects in church. Your, your nephews, your grandsons, your son, they're in church, they're doing well. But let me tell you something. These young men and young women are targeted by Satan. So you know what? We have to pray for them. Young men, I tell you the truth, opportunities are open for you, but also Her Majesty's prison is always open. <laughs> I hate when I see, look in the paper, and I don't see anything about advancement. I don't see progress. But I see gun crime, I see robbery, I see everything when it comes to the brothers and the sisters. And then some of us want to be gangster. Let me tell you something. Let me even address it now. If you're on your phone now playing Facebook or a game, come off. Put it away. This is not the time. You have your time to go on social media tonight and watch Match of the Day highlights. Now you're in the house of God. We need to hear something about life. Yeah. Hear something about life. Because the truth be told, I don't want any of you to end up in prison. And when you sit there, you say, I wish I had listened. And let me tell you something. I've learned in life, you have two wishes. When you were young, and then parents bring the cake, and they, they, before you blow the candle, they say, make a wish. And you wish that you were rich, or you wish the mommy, God take your mommy and daddy, and then you go, Phew. and everybody clap. But there's a wish also. When you're lying on your deathbed, yeah, I wish I had listened to God. 
I wish I had listened to my mom and dad. I wish I had pursued my education. I wish I had worked on that idea. I wish I had stepped out in faith. I wish I didn't go in that relationship. I wish I had stayed with those friends. I wish I had did this. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. But the truth be told, you can't do it. It's already out. There's some people around the couple called parents. There's some parents, the truth be told. Some things that you have said to your children <laughs> has caused them to be in that couple. Can I give you some examples? Some moms will say to their children, you're worthless like your father. <laughs> Look at you, you're ugly like your father. Why? Because you have an issue with the dad. Can't get to take out the issue on him. So you take it out on your children. And put them in the car. So they grow up thinking that they're worthless. Then there's another one. Why can't you be like so-and-so's children? <laughs> they got seven a star. They do this, they do that. So what happened now? The truth be told, you don't know. You never spend time to understand or learn the gifts of your children. You're busy trying to go out like everybody else. Oh, this is my son. He has seven eight stars. But because your son or your daughter is not giving you that, you put them down. So they're in a car. Why can't you be like so and so? So they grow up now having identity problem. I want to be like this. I want to be like this rap star. I want to be like this. Why? Because you have killed their identity. There's some fathers who are killing their children. Don't you know that when you leave home, you're leaving your children vulnerable to the devices of society? Some of these men, they go around, they have three, four different baby mothers, and they get respect for that. How? How do they get respect for that? Have you sat down and ever teach them the time table? That's why you have kids now who are 16, 17, 18, and they don't even know the two times table. But that is a party. Drinking and having a good time. Not realizing that by your attitude, you're killing your children. There's some people around the coffin called social services. <laughs> Let me tell you something, young people. Some of the stuff that you're going through here and think is hardship. If you were back home where I come from, my mom would have been arrested a long time. in that home now, you have numbers you can call. But don't get me wrong, there's some children who have been abused at home. Yeah. But some of us, what we call abuse is nothing. Yeah. You get a little lick in your hand, you run down to call. Let me tell you, I used to get a lick in my hand, in my head, everywhere mama could find space, I get a lick there. <laughs> and let me tell you something, I don't care what you want to say, I love her for it. Because she, in her effort, she may not know what all of you know and read all the books on parenting. But let me tell you something. I knew that behind every leak was love. It was painful. It was hot. And I cried. And when I was crying, she said, what are you crying for? And she still gave me a leak for that. But the truth is, though, there was love behind this. <laughs> There's some people around the cup and call teachers. You have some teachers who have given up on certain children. And it should be told, let me tell you something, I've learned something, I'm not a teacher. I, I do teach an assistant sometimes, but let me tell you something. You see some of those kids that we put at the back of the class? You see, if we take time to understand them and learn of them, you realize that there are some gifts that are buried there. They may not fit in the curriculum. And it should be told, they try to point everybody in the curriculum. Not everybody going to fit in it. But the problem we have now, when they come home 
and they have a bad report that they didn't participate in school. The parents at home watching soap. <laughs> Mommy, can you help me with this? Boy, go and sit down. You see me watching television. <laughs> Mommy, can you help me with this? Da, 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 da. Daddy, boy, go and study your book. Nobody helping the child. <laughs> Nobody. But we're sitting now watching the soap. You know, we're not from the east side, but we're watching the enders. <laughs> <laughs> you have your own home, but you're watching home and away. <laughs> but I'm trying to say some of us are losing our homes, but we're just busy watching home and away. Now realizing soon you will be home and away. <laughs> That body in the coffin represents some parents. Young people, the truth be told, some of us here, our attitude and our disposition is killing our parents. Stressing them out, man. Not listening. Not doing anything they ask you to do. So when we grow up as men, we kind of wash plates. Not listening. All of a sudden now, you, you start to have a little ram, go with beer somewhere here, you start to, who are you talking to? Let me tell you something, even my voice go deep as the deepest bit. I'm not, my mom is not afraid to, to. <laughs> What am I trying to say, young man? Not because it's in here, come here, you're a man. When you start to work, when you start to be independent, when you start to love and help your mom, when you start to know where you're going in life, then you start to tap into manhood. There's some parents right now, their hearts are bleeding because of your attitude. You know what I don't like? When you know the person in the coffin and you know the children kill them off, you know. But when they come to the funeral, they we have the, the heart so broad you can't even see the sun. And they're there and they're crying. Like they really missed the property. Truth be told, when the person was alive, you didn't care. You slammed the door at your mom, you cursed her, and then go and live there and live there. And when mom is in, you come crying like you love her. The truth be told, if you want to show love to your mom and your dad, show them today. Yes. If you haven't grown up with your mom or dad, if it's your auntie or somebody who raised you, show them love. The first time I came here and I ate chicken and chips, I cried for my mom. <laughs> because sometimes we don't know what we have until we lose it. When she came the other day, she was so happy. Why? Because she said the fruits of her legs. And I'm trying to say, young people, the truth be told, yes, we have times mommy don't understand. And let me tell you something, parents. You, you, the, the world that we're living in right now is moving so fast. So fast that the truth be told, these kids are somehow more advanced than some of you. But what I'm trying to say now, we have to either, I don't have a child here, but you have to re educate yourself and learn the tricks of the trade. Because sometimes the deer playing games, and when they hear you coming, they just maximize the homework and they focus, and you just look down. And when you go on back from stage, they press me the night and they go on with the game. And you just say, my son, he studies till 10, 12 o'clock. No, he ain't. He playing game. <laughs> what am I trying to say? You see, when you come to the coffee mentality, we know what section of our life we need to deal with to get out, to become active. If you're a singer, sing. If you're an organizer, organize. Get the, get your life some meaning. Get your life something that's working. When you wake up in the morning, instead of saying, oh boy, get up in the morning, give your life something and say, yes, today is a new day. And you just run. Run with life. Run with energy. Run with enthusiasm. Run with a plan. Some of us here, we have no plan. 
We don't even know what we're doing next week. But the government have a five-year plan to take away your home. And you're just sitting there watching television and you're on game every day and you Facebook and you just you become a scribe. You're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And you don't have no life of your own. And you're scrolling and you're scrolling. And then you have five minutes to read or something. You just scroll. And all you do is scrolling all your life. And when you wake up, you realize that those people have moved on. I'm not saying anything is wrong with social media, but discipline yourself yeah. to make sure that you invest enough energy and time into our future. <coughs> the couple was coming out. I need to wrap this up. The Bible says that when he came, the money when he came out, there was too much people. So maybe the boy was famous or the mom was famous. It also mentioned that she was a widow. But I'm going to tell you now, mothers, if daddy is not around, I'm encouraging the mothers and grandmothers, stay strong. Amen. Bring God in the house. Bring God in the house. And I'm saying something to the elders as well. There are times when we need to visit some of these young men and visit some of these young women and talk to them because the pressure out there is intense. One time I was offered something. Went to this friend's house and when I, my friend left and I didn't know his sister was there. I always, you know, she, she liked the pastor. So when I woke up the morning, she was there in a, on, what do you call that thing now? It's a, it's a pan that's hot. What do you call it? Hot. <laughs> So she look at me lustfully and she say, you think it's now I want you? <laughs> and she laughing and she say, hey. <laughs> and she slap herself and she say, you can't manage this body. <laughs> and there's two type of men in the world. The one who would walk away and the one who would say, hmm. How you mean I can't manage this boy? <laughs> and let me tell you something, I was struggling between the two at the time. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna be honest with you, I, I, I'm a man. She was like, but let me tell you something, Satan ain't stupid. No. Satan ain't gonna put no girl that you're not attracted to, or the girl is not. Me. Satan knows to set us up. So I was there and she walking and I look it. So I said to myself, God, you know that minute when you catch yourself to pray, but the, 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 your focus is thus distorted. I got up. You see, the Lord made a way for me to get up and go to the door. Elder, all I had to do was put on my trainers and just leave you. Yeah, yeah. But I take up the trainers mm -hmm. and go back and sit at the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I realized something. I was wrestling, young man. I was wrestling. I'm there and I'm thinking, God, what am I doing? And then when I got up, I heard a voice say, touch her. Mm -hmm. Never forget. It was only me and her in the house. And a voice said, touch me. It's not like you're committing fornication. That's when I knew that Satan was in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, when I look around and I realize nobody was there, yeah. I tell you the truth, I felt a force push me out of that house. I didn't know when I reached out. And I remember saying to God, God, thank you because if it wasn't because of you, I don't know what would have happened in the house. But God ain't stupid either. That's right. That's right. I went to bed one night. I was at the Advent Center preaching. And let me tell you something. That time I was preaching at the Advent Center. I tell you, I was in the spirit, the energy, the enthusiasm, the sweat, everything. I remember being on there, the anointing of the Lord. And when I was there preaching, the back door of the Advent Center opened. Then everybody look around. And when they look, it was the younger. Pregnant. She looked at the people in Advent Center and said, Church, Clarence is not who you think he is. Brothers and sisters, you see when I realized it was a dream and I woke up? I told you one night I went to bed. Yes, I did. 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 I did
it says, when I woke up and I felt myself and realized it was a dream. Because you see, what God did, the sweat, everything was on my face. So when I woke up and realized, I tell you, if I never thanked the Lord before, that night I thanked him. And watch this now. I saw the girl a couple of days after, and she smiled and said, hi. But every time I see her, I remember the dream. Yeah. Yeah. That's what God did to protect me. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says he always makes a way of escape. That's right. That's right. The Bible says when Jesus came. The Bible said the young boy in the coffin was the only son of his mother. He was the only son of his mother. Jesus was the only, sorry, is the only son of his mother. My sister. So the only son of his mother was now in the presence of the only Son of God. Mm. Only God knows what will happen here. Mm. The Bible said, Jesus said to the mother, what? We not. Now, who in their right mind? Go and tell a mother who lost her son to we not. That's why I love Jesus. Yes. He just do some things that ain't normal. Mm. Let me tell you something. It's when you're angry with Jesus, young people, yeah. you experience 